Hello guys, welcome back. Um, so as you might remember last time we made a, a barely usable version of a perceptron. This is what it looked like. That could, uh, could guess the output uh, given three inputs. Um, now in this video we're gonna yeah, use that skeleton and, and basically uh, make it into a more usable format. And uh, for that we'll use a, a class. Um, the class is basically uh, the, the, the object uh, version in Python and uh, it can store a bunch of functions and variables. So again we'll start by importing NumPy which is always needed if you're working with neural networks and then we'll define a class. Class name is always uh, written in camel case by the way and not snake case as usual with Python. So a uh, class consists of a bunch of functions and the first function is by definition almost always our initialized function. Uh, you might wonder what these underscores are. Well, basically that's just a convention. And these, these functions are called dunder methods when they have like two, um, or data model me methods is ba basically a, a better um, name for them. You can look it up if you want to. They always, every function inside of a, a, a class takes in self as a standard variable. And the self is a, a namespace in which you can store variables that can later be used uh, outside and inside of the neural network with different functions. So in the initialization function, we'll set the random seed to one. And all the logic and stuff like that uh, can be found in the previous video in which I uh, try to explain everything as thoroughly as possible. Then we'll use the uh, self namespace to store our synaptic weights. And those are made like this, random dot random. And we'll give them a three by one matrix. All right, so now these are all values. This is a three by one matrix uh, with all values between minus one and uh, one with a mean of zero. Next up is our sigmoid function, which takes in self as well, and x. And this returns our sigmoid function of x, obviously. So like this, and minus x, all right. Next up is the sigmoid derivative, which also takes in self and x and returns the derivative of the six points function. Okay, now the next two functions, uh, train and think, are basically the core of our object. Uh, they do the most of the work. So we'll start with train, which takes in self, our training inputs, which we'll define later. Same with the uh, training outputs. Oh. And our training iterations. Now, this is the core of training um, our neural network. So, for iteration in range training iterations, which we'll be able to adjust ourselves, um, output would be will be self dot think, which is another. Um, function of our, our neural network that we'll define later. So self.think with our training inputs. All right. Um, next up, we have to define the error. So hold on. Um, the error equals the training outputs we gave uh, our neural networks our neural network minus the outputs it produced. The er these errors are needed for backpropagation. Again, if you want to know more about it, check out my first video. And then we'll define the adjustments, which is the dot product. Uh, basically, it's matrix multiplication of our training inputs transposed. And 
with our error times our self dot sigma sigma derivative of the output. All right, and then we'll make the adjustment. So adjust the synaptic weights according to the fault to the weight of the fault, basically. That's all uh, back propagation. Um, yeah, so plus equals adjustments. All right. Uh, the next function is think. These are just arbitrarily chosen names, but they make a lot of sense to me. But yeah, you can choose them differently if you want to. So it takes in self and in inputs. Um, okay, so yeah, since we're doing a dot product again, and our inputs are basically uh, integers, and our synaptic weights are floats, uh, and you can't, yeah. You can dot, take a dot product of those two, so we're going to have to convert our inputs to floats, which is not a problem. Just use the s type method and give it a float, all right. And then the output equals the sigmoid of dot product of inputs times the synaptic weights. All right, and this returns the output. Okay, so our uh, class is done. Next up, we'll have to make it a usable yeah, command line program. And this is done like this. You might have seen this already. It gets used quite a lot. Wait, main, I mean. All right, so first we'll initialize a neural network like this. We basically call it like a function. Um, and let's do some recording. So first, the random synaptic weights. And because of our uh, self variable, we can access functions and variables like this. Basically calling a method on the, the neural network class. All right, uh, next up, yeah, we're gonna take the same training data as uh, in the previous video. So I'll just copy that. All right. Um, and then we'll have to train it. So. Again, calling off, uh, calling the training function of the object, and giving it the training inputs, training outputs, and the training iterations. As you might remember, we defined that here. You can also use a custom input if you want to, but we're not going to do that. Or I'm not going to do that. And then we'll print um, the synaptic weights after training. Network weights. Uh -huh. All right, next up, uh, we'll ask the user, which is us, to provide our custom inputs to test um, the neural network on. These need to be converted by, uh, to a string, by the way. So input one b equals a string of inputs two, and then c equals a string of input three. All right. So, no situation would be input data to be A, uh, B, and C. And then we print the output data, which should be correct. So we'll use it. Oh. 
we use the think function again. Think with inputs being A, B, and C. Right, so uh, let's give that a go. Python email. Yeah, damn. Oh, okay. Synaptic weights. Right, that should be it. Okay, so as you remember, or might remember, the first input is uh, one, the output should be one, and otherwise it should be a zero. So I hope this works. And yeah. As close to one as we can get with 10,000 uh, iterations. Might crank that up, but you'll never get to um, a one because of yeah the properties of a sigmoid function. But this is close enough. So uh, yeah, that was it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll the next video is probably going to be nothing with to do with um, neural networks, but with uh, uh, JavaScript and Node.js, Express and MongoDB. So we're gonna make a, a mean stack app. So if you wanna see more of that, uh, please consider subscribing. And if you liked the video, uh, leave a comment and a like, and I'll see you guys next.